Hi there, this is Norman with iSaveTractors.com. Welcome to part three of the Cup Cadet 149 tractor loader backhoe transformation. In this video, I'm going to be taking apart this whole steering column, removing some of the components, so check it out. Okay, the first thing I have to do is I have to remove these hard hydraulic lines here that run from the transmission to the hydraulic control valve that controls the hydraulic lift on this tractor. So I'm going to use an 11 16 inch wrench and remove these two uh, nuts as well as remove these two hydraulic fittings right here. Now here's a quick tip when you remove these hydraulic lines. Make sure uh, the entire work area is clean so no dirt and debris goes in to the hydraulic uh, inputs here. Okay, so after you remove uh, these two hard lines as well as these two connections on the transmission, these lines will pull right out. I have my oldest son Noah here helping me out with the disassembly. This is Noah. He is my, uh, my assistant today in removing uh, some of the hydraulic and steering fittings. Say hi to the video, Noah. Hi. Should I take it out? And make sure when you take the hydraulic lines off to clean the areas around the transmission pump really well so no dirt and debris goes gets in there. It's also a good idea to cover up the hydraulic ports with some tape. Okay, so I've looked at uh, the steering column and I've made a few changes to my game plan. Before I remove the hydraulic components, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the steering wheel, disconnect all the linkages and electrical components underneath, and then I'm going to remove this whole steering column off in order to take off the hydraulic valve and some of the other components. To remove this steering wheel nut, I'm going to use a 15 16 impact socket. Okay, so in order to get the steering wheel off, I had to abandon the idea of using a three jaw puller. What I did was I soaked the shaft, the spline shaft here, with penetrating oil, and then I hooked the steering wheel up to a chain hoist attached to the ceiling of my garage and then I took a giant steel bar and a hammer and I hammered downward on the tractor so what I did is I picked the tractor up via the steering wheel so all the weight of the tractor helped me pull the steering wheel off and then I took a steel uh, bar and a hammer and I hammered this downward and eventually the steering wheel just popped off uh, and this came out that was much easier than using a job puller Okay, now it's time to remove the battery uh, connections off the terminals on the solenoid as well as remove all the electrical connections from the light switch and the ignition switch. Okay, now that I have the steering wheel off, the electrical connections disconnected from the solenoid, the ignition switch, the light switch, the ammeter, I also had to remove this little rubber grommet uh, around the steering wheel. Uh, 
And one part I almost overlooked was removing the two bolts that mounted the end of the hydrostatic uh, control lever to the frame right down there. Now that I've removed all those things, I should be able to just lift this right off the tractor. Let's see. Now that I have the steering column removed off the tractor, I'm going to further disassemble it uh, by removing this hydrostatic control knob. This is connected via a spline onto the shaft and it also has a little Allen it also has a little Allen bolt right here that I'll have to unscrew. So I'll unscrew that, I'll uh, soak this in a little bit of penetrating fluid, then I should be able to pull that off. Removing the throttle should be easy, it's just attached by these two screws. The choke, the ammeter should all come off easily. This is just attached via a couple of screws as well as a roll pin. So this I'm going to disassemble, get it ready for paint and finish, uh, and then that should be no problem. Now back to the tractor frame. This is what the frame looks like without the steering column. Now I'm going to remove this raw steering gear. That's just attached by two bolts uh, on the other side of this that connects to the frame. That'll come off pretty easily. I'm going to remove this hydraulic cylinder. Uh, I'm not going to need that anymore for the rebuild because I'm going to be using, as I mentioned earlier, uh, a separate hydraulic control valve to handle all of the hydraulic equipment. I'm not going to use this lift at all because I'm not going to have uh, anything lifted by the hydraulic controls that came with the original tractor. Everything's going to be run off of an auxiliary pump, so I won't need that. Uh, I'm going to redo all the wiring, remove this uh, drive shaft from the transmission, and we're going to further pull everything off. There are the two bolts that connect the steering gear to the frame of the tractor. They're both 9 16 inch bolts, so I'm just going to remove those and the steering column will come right out. I'm holding the camera with one hand and turning this nut or this bolt with the other. You can see the steering column getting loose. It's probably going to fall right on my camera. There it goes. So now that those two bolts are off, this steering gear right here will come right out. Oh, it's still connected to the tie rods via that. So I'm going to have to pull that off and then I'll... Oh, now my strap, my camera strap is stuck. Dangerous uh, filming here. Let me remove that, that linkage that connects to the steering and then I'm gonna pull that column right out. Okay, so I got that linkage off and here's the steering gear. This is called a Ross steering gear. What it is, is it's a cam and follower type design. There's a little cam on the other side of this plate that rides up and down this uh, worm gear that when you turn the steering wheel, it turns this back and forth, which in turn turns the steering linkages to turn your wheel. Uh, this is an automotive style uh, steering wheel. This is what they used to come into cars uh, 50 to 60 years ago. And I'm going to cover rebuilding this in a different part. Uh, but here the steering column is, or the steering gear I should say, and it's coming right out. Now let's get rid of this hydraulic ram. This is attached uh, via these two points down here, one over there, one over there. They're held on with these uh, cotter pins. I'm going to pull those out and remove this whole uh, hydraulic cylinder right out of the tractor. We're not going to use these in our rebuild either. So all it is is taking up space. Give these a couple of love taps and they'll come right out. There it goes. Next, let's remove this electrical cable out of the way. They're just underneath these bent metal tabs. I'll just grab a screwdriver and pry those out.
Here comes the electrical wiring. Now, is out of the way. We'll be rewiring this whole machine after. We don't need any of that. Let's next turn our attention to the front of the tractor. This uh, linkage right here on the front, this is the engagement for the front PTO that originally came with this tractor. I'm not going to use that. I'm either going to have a full-time hydraulic gear pump mounted to the crankshaft of the engine or I'm going to turn it into an electric PTO. So we don't need this system anymore. This is held in with two carter pins, one right there and one over here. I'm going to pull that out and this thing should slide right out. There we go. A little plastic bushing there was getting me a little caught up, but that's out. We don't need that anymore. I might use these holes for uh, mounting some of the supports, the front end loader. We'll see when we get to that point. All right. Now, now it's time to take this drive shaft off. These are little uh, couplings here, flexible couplings. What these do is it compensate for the the drive shaft connection, the dr connection between the engine and the transmission might not be perfectly straight and this flexible coupling material helps compensate for that. These are uh, 9 16 inch bolts. I'm going to pull those off and get this drive shaft off. Okay, now it's time to remove the rear end uh, from the frame of the tractor. This transaxle is mounted to the frame via six bolts. There's one here, one there, one right there, and then three on the opposite side. All of the bolt heads are 9 16 inch. What I've done here is I've jacked the tractor up, and I've put the frame on these two jack stands right here, and I have a hydraulic uh, lift table ready to accept the rear end after I unbolt it. After I unbolt it, I'm going to gently lift the tailor, uh, the table upwards, and then I'm going to gently help back this uh, rear end out of the tra tractor frame and onto this table. really on there. Let's give this one another try. Here it comes. Oh boy, this one's really on there. We now have the six bolts out. But before I remove the rear end from this frame, I also need to remove these two uh, brake linkages. They're attached via more of those uh, bent, rusted cotter pins down there. So I'm going to remove those two cotter pins, pull off these two uh, brake control rods, and then we will pull the rear end out. So this right here is the brake rod I'm trying to get. There isn't enough clearance for me to just pull it out. Oh, who would have thunk? There is enough clearance. I can't just pull that out. Never mind, we're good. Okay, so now that these two brake linkages, one right here and one right over here, are out, this entire rear end can now slide out of the rear of the tractor frame. I can't just drop it because there are some mounting ears inside of this dark area. You probably, you're not going to be able to see it on the camera. I'm trying to get in focus. But right about here where the tip of my finger is, there's a little bracket there that, uh, that this little bolt that was up here attaches to. On the other side of this, there's a little bracket that's attached to the transmission pump. So I can't just drop the rear end from underneath the frame. I'm going to try to uh, lower the hydraulic lift table a tiny bit and then just slide everything out. Uh, hopefully it goes as planned. Watch for your amusement.
That didn't go as well as I hoped. This would be a lot easier if the rear end didn't weigh over 200 pounds, it feels like. There we go. Now I'm just going to slowly push Amy this back. Alright, I'm a little off kilter here. There we go. This would be much easier if I had a helper. But my son Noah left me. Kids. now but it's out that looks like a good place to leave off on this part three of our cub cadet 149 tractor loader backhoe transformation be sure to check out our website isavetractors.com we sell tons of aftermarket parts for your vintage kohler k and briggs and stratton engines as well as other vintage lawn and garden tractor parts also be sure to like share and subscribe to this video for more stuff thank you for saving the tractors